your duds in order Cause we're bound to cross the water Heave away, me jollies, heave away Hey! All right, ramp it up now, come on! Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. I brought everyone in behind the video to say hello. Uh, welcome to Off the Leash Neptune Theater's uh, almost nightly live stream, Tuesdays to Fridays. We have special guests uh, every night. I'm very pleased to be in a very crowded virtual room right now with the entire company of Neptune Theater's uh, production of the Argyle Street Kitchen Party. All four of the uh, existing cast and one new person who's joining uh, the next time we do the show later in the year. So please welcome uh, Celia Kion, uh, Dominique LeBlanc, Karen Lizotte, Malia Rogers, and Ian Sherwood in the middle there. Hi, you guys. Hi. Hey, hey. Yeah. It's so good to see you all. Thank you. How are you? You're great, man. Thanks. We're great. Thanks. You said, I, forecast. I was in pajamas and an old t-shirt I've been wearing for the last four weeks of isolation. <laughs> That's good. It's good. Yeah, putting on the COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, in my uh, case, it might be the COVID-25. No. <laughs> so uh, before we before we get talking about theater and the show and, and what you're up to, I first want to just do a quick go around and, uh, and check that you are all healthy, safe, and keeping relatively sane. Uh, so let's start with Celia. Where are you? How's it going? Yeah, uh, I'm at home at my mom's house in PEI right now. Um, it's great. I'm happy to be to be spending this time at home with my family. Uh, you know, it, it goes like one day is awesome, the next day is like a little bit sketchy, but right. you know, just it, it's all good. I'm happy to be home and healthy. I think we're I think we're all feeling the same. Yeah. <laughs> day, one day sketchy, one day okay. Uh, yeah. Karen, how are you? And how's your world right now? Because uh, it's not just you, is it? No, uh, things are new around here. I've been in my own little bit of isolation actually for the past six months because of my new son, Rowan. If folks saw the kitchen party this past summer, they noticed that I maybe had a, a different kind of COVID-19 in the front. Uh, <laughs> that, that, uh, yeah, so he was our he was our honorary fifth cast member and born in October. So we've been having a lot of fun here at home. Uh, you know, every day is different, and uh, it's been really amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we've we've actually I think most of us managed to uh, to meet Rowan very soon after, briefly at a meeting we had. But uh, looking forward to seeing him again in the future. Ian, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, I was kind of built for self isolation. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I so I've spent a long time, you know, just sitting around playing instruments. You know, over the course of my life, that's kind of just all I all I do. So, but I mean, when I first I was in Australia when everything happened, so I had to oh, quickly yeah. buy a plane ticket to get back into that's crazy. Canada. Yeah, it was, it was actually, so that was the scariest thing about it. Was I was so far away and then had to very quickly come home. But then once I was home, uh, I was isolated here in my house by myself. My family wasn't even here. I've got two kids and, and my wife and they were up at my mother-in-law's place anyway, because they just were trying to, you know, they had my mother-in-law in the loop. So while I was gone away on this trip, they would have extra help, blah, blah, blah. I ended up coming back here. I had two weeks sort of on my own rattling around the house and and now the family's back in but we're still kind of just rattling around the house <laughs> it's great you know yeah. homeschooling hanging out in the yard getting the garden ready uh renovating a basement it's uh it's you know yeah, it's you great hey, stop talking because <laughs> you, right. you, you mentioned all those things and i'm hoping yeah. 
that Melissa upstairs isn't watching right now because you're making my inactivity <laughs> seem really embarrassing. Um, those are just things that are on a list. I'm not doing any of them. Okay, They're good. Just like okay, good. available okay. should I ever want to do them. Yeah. All right, uh, Malia, how are you doing? Where are you? Oh, um, so I'm in Toronto, uh, quarantining in my apartment with my partner and our house plants. Um, <laughs> I think I can confidently say that I was not built for quarantine. I'm typically <laughs> a very social person who doesn't really like to be home much. Uh, so it's been a little bit of a challenge for me, but I'm really trying to embrace the opportunity to just like slow down and uh, be more yeah. present kind of with my friends and my family and really just like take the time to like appreciate the the pause. And I feel really lucky to be in a, in a place and in a circumstance that it's, you know, safe and relatively easy for me to do so. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that's great. Dominique, you, uh, for, for those people that uh, don't know you, um, who have seen the kitchen party, they'll recognize the other four, uh, but you're joining the kitchen party this year. So, you know, thank you for, you know, creating a bit of a drama to build into your entrance. That's amazing. How are you? And where are you? And what are you up to? I am, uh, well, I'm home in Dartmouth. And I am with my parents, my little sister, and our three dogs. So it's quite the time for me. Um, I actually flew home. I go to school in Toronto. And I had to fly home on the Saturday, so Friday. I was just at school like a normal theater person. Yeah. And, uh, and then the day after, I was at the airport. So it was, it was very, um, very yeah. nice all of a sudden, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good to know that you're all safe. Good to know that you're all well and that your families are okay with you and that you've got some people around you. Um, let's start talking a little bit about the kitchen party. I'm actually seeing some uh, questions come in. So rather than me just asking my questions, because I, you know, uh, let's throw some comments up here and we'll get some immediate reactions. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Everything. A little bit few words. There we go. Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> now, here's someone that you'll recognize, uh, the original director Hi, of your Hello. Hey. Hey. hey, hey, Laura. Hey. Oh, thanks. <laughs> this, is, this is like uh, old home week. Now everybody's getting their comments in. I'm just going to go through them quickly here. We're, I'll get now. This is nice. Great to see everyone back together again. So here's a question, a good one to start us off with. Uh, Dominique, you might have trouble with this because you haven't done this. <laughs> no, but you can make something up. Um, What's your favorite thing about the Argyle Street Kitchen Party? Um, let's start off. But Karen, what do you think? What's your favorite thing about doing this show with these? Beautiful? It's a dream. Everybody's so it's like everybody's so laid back. There's a magical thing about like the actor musician person. I don't know what it is, but there's there's just everybody's so chill and and so easy to get along with and the music is so fun and the crowds are always so fun even you know when we had what was that one time we had like seven people oh, in the no. house oh, i'm sorry to bring it up yeah. <laughs> how yeah. awesome was that yeah. day like it was my mom and four of her it was, friends <laughs> it was wonderful right because oh. like every show had its own energy and it was always a great a positive energy whether it was seven yeah. people or 70 or 170 it was just mm -hmm. it was just a great time all the time what I what I loved about seeing that video at the beginning of our show tonight was seeing that energy represented because uh, more often than the that one time when you had seven people, <laughs> uh, the weird day, um, weird day. We, we had crowds like that and people were up and dancing. Um, for example, uh, Darren here, he's been twice. We love a repeat hey. customer. Uh, the show's delicious. Thank awesome. You. Thanks, Darren. Thank All right. Um, oh, here, here, Ian, why don't you take this one? Uh, are you planning to change any of the songs in the show this summer? Uh, there's always talk of that, you know? Like, we, uh, the, the, it's a really, uh, it's a tight rehearsal process, so we don't have the opportunity to change a lot of things. Every year, well, we've only done it two years. In the past two years, we change it a little bit. So last year, we added a couple songs. Um, when Lenny Gallant comes to the show, we swap out his song for a different song. Right. Uh, so yeah, things will probably change a little bit the next time we do the show as well. Um, 
I've got some ideas rattling around that Jeremy and I haven't even talked about yet about what we can do for just to kind of freshen things up. But there are just some songs in that show that just have to be done. I mean, there are just, they're just so universal to the theme of the kitchen party. Everyone knows them and you can hear them a thousand times and, and it, and it doesn't really matter. And it would be almost be a crime to do the show without them. So, so yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll probably switch it up, but we won't switch up the whole show. Malia, do you have any idea of how many songs are in the show? Oh. I think there are 18, 18 oh, okay. or 22. I've got one of those, those two numbers are rattling around. I was oh, you know what? No, I actually, it's more than that. So. Because there's there are medleys, so it might be upwards of 30. Like, sometimes you only get, like, five seconds of a song, but I think there might be might be upwards of 30 tunes in the song, right. in the in the show. In my mind, it's just one long, continuous song. It's just this no, one never-ending song. Because we don't get to stop. It, it, so really, no, it's like... No, that's right. <laughs> it's the longest and knowing, song ever. Knowing you four, and then five, uh, you probably don't even stop yabbering on in the intermission either backstage. Um, <laughs> so, Malia, let me yeah. ask you a question. Um, oh, it's just gone right out of my head. Oh, yeah. So for the people that haven't seen the show and that don't know what on earth we're talking about, can you... Yeah explain what they are coming to when they come to the Argyle Street Kitchen Party at Neptune. What is, what is it all about? You're coming to, I think, a, a celebration of all of the, like everything that you've heard about or have experienced if you're from the East Coast, but the hospitality and the camaraderie and the instant connection that is so typical for people from our our communities to form with each other over music. Um, you're coming to a space to celebrate that and to really get to bond over some of the shared history of those songs and the common knowledge of that music and just get to connect with each other and connect with us. And it's just, it's just joy. It's straight up joy. And it's such a joyous experience to perform it every night. It's and I've heard right. from so many people that it's such a joyous experience to watch. So. Okay. I'm really looking forward to it again. <laughs> I know, right? Seeing yeah. that video and watching that video is making me kind of, well, also because I've been stuck in my house for four weeks now, I really want to go back to the theater and, and watch you guys. Um, here's a comment that's quite nice. Two different summers when Lenny was a guest. So explain, uh, Celia, why don't you tell us about the, the way the guest artists figure into the show? What's that all about? Yeah, so that's, kind of one of my favorite parts about the whole experience. Um, so we do a set, we do a whole first act and then we do a little bit into the second act and then a special guest artist shows up and does around like a 20 minute set. Um, and it's just been so cool to share the stage with people like Heather Rankin that I've, and Lenny Gulland that I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've like, I, if you had told like little kids Celia that, I would be inviting Lenny Gallant to a party on my roof and he'd come. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so just like even just getting to, um, yeah, to, to learn and listen to such well-established and inspiring artists, it's really, really cool. So you get to experience all the favorite East Coast songs you love that this cast sings, and then you get to hear um, someone that you probably also love perform their stuff. It's really, really cool. Awesome, that's great. That's uh, you, you guys have summed it up and that's really what we hoped for when Ian and I first started talking about it and to create that joy and to create that entertainment. Um, here's a question uh, for Dominique. I'm just gonna find it. Here it is. Oh my, well. <laughs> it, I, have, sure. you do, I, I just wanna say that uh, everyone plays, I think multiple instruments in the show, right? Is that fair to say? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> So carry on, Dominic. In in life or in the show? Well, I guess I guess you don't really know yet in the show because you're yet to rehearse it. But in life, yeah. How many? What what, what did you what did you throw at Ian and I uh, during the audition process? Uh, well, I I play the fiddle. Um, I've played that for about 14, 15 years, I think now. Um, guitar, uh, piano. I'm looking around my my <laughs> here, looking at instruments I've got. Uh, I'm playing how to play the mandolin. Um, uh, hold on, it's a hard question to ask a musician. You're a singer. 
I sing. That is true. Yeah, um, you do. Cool. Yeah, guitar, piano, fiddle, bass. I just love to pick stuff up. So I, yeah. I don't know. The list keeps going, I'm sure, as it does for a lot, a lot of people. Um, this is a very, uh, very interesting message. I think I'm going to take this as an invitation that uh, this person wants a house concert, and we'll take uh, we'll take Lenny with us, <laughs> uh, Julian Kiley. <laughs> From Newfoundland, but also from the NAC, the National Arts Center. Hi, Julian. Good to see you. Thanks for watching. Um, here's a question. What is your favorite song to perform in the show? Dominique, what are you most looking forward to? Did you get to see the show? I didn't because I was not in the province, but I saw a lovely video of it. So. Okay, cool. So uh, what's, your, what's your favorite song to perform in the show? Let's go around the other four uh, quickly and get a sense of what and why. Yeah, you go we start with you have one me uh favorite show uh, yeah, favorite sorry. song um uh well i've got i've got two that i'm gonna have to choose uh well they're all the thing is is that i think karen really hit the nail on the head like the songs in the show are just incredible and that's sort of that's my favorite part about it um i sing a joel plaskett song in the show uh everywhere uh everywhere to go that's my song uh <laughs> <laughs> good plug nice plug <laughs> uh nowhere with you which is the joel plaskett song um and it's just for me it's kind of it's the end of the first act i'm jumping on a table it's high energy the crowd is clapping along i mean for me it's uh i mean i love all the songs in the show but as far as like a song in the show for me personally and what i get out of that moment it's it's kind of a, a high point for me that's not that's not me singing that song right there that's us <laughs> posing for a picture not singing anything at all in particular but you know there is but I think that Joel Plaskett song, and Nowhere With You, is probably yeah. the high point for me yeah. in the show. Karen, what about you? Rankin Medley. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the fact great. that we get to start and like start it off with the flute and the saxophone is just like so fun. It's just yeah. like now for something completely different. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I get a kick out of it. And I mean, Rankin music, come on. It's, yeah. it's the best. It's epic. What was it like uh, when Heather Rankin walked out through that door? and joined you on stage. I mean, I was there both times. I, I was there for most, a lot of the guests. I missed a few, but I certainly was there for Heather. And this last year, when uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, because I don't get told anything, uh, you guys had done a little bit of rehearsing with some of the artists. And so they, they pull you into their set because they come in and they do a set um, and you put in. Suddenly you find yourself backing up Heather Rankin <laughs> on a Rankin tune that's like East Coast mega famous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a life highlight for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only imagine. <laughs> uh, Malia, what about for you? What's what's oh, one of your sort of standout moments in the show? Oh, it's, it's, it's really sort of impossible to pick some of the tunes that I love playing and singing the most, but some of the ones that immediately come to mind uh, one of them is Feel the Same Way Too at the end of the Rankin Medley. That's like the song that I blast in the car on the way to every show. <laughs> um, I also really love uh, some of the tunes in the modern medley, like Blackbird on Fire by Amelia Curran. I actually hadn't heard myself before we started this, before we started the rehearsal process the first time, and I just fell in love with it. Um, and in that medley as well, we also do just a little blip of Inner Ninja by Classified. And I always look for the kids in the audience because there's just this moment of like, oh, I know this one. And it's so sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, did I miss anyone? Oh, me. Well, yeah. um, my favorite is River Shuffle. Like, oh, that's yeah. Crazy. Oh, right. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Every time, like, I was stomping my foot so hard. Like, I surprised I didn't break the heel off my shoe. But that, <laughs> and I said, every night I said the same thing after we performed um, Ian's song, We're Not Alone Tonight. Mm -hmm. But I really meant it. Like, there's something about that song that I just loved playing and singing with with you and the audience joins in and I think it's it's a really, really special song. Oh, you're gonna make me cry, Celia. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. Thank you. That's very right, really fun. Question. How many of the cast can dance? Ian, you better not answer this. <laughs> uh yeah. I better not answer it, you said? Yeah. Not? I don't know. Ian's got some moves. I know, I know. I'm just, right. I'm just I can do the floss. 
<laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah, we did that a lot backstage. <laughs> I think that in the show, though, it's really Celia that gets to, or the you know Celia's role. Uh, so uh, Dominique, you better you know you dust up your step <laughs> Yeah. But uh, Celia, you get to sort of really do the show off part, but everyone's bopping around, right? Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't do like uh, a Leahy front of the stage dance off or anything like that. Like it's yet uh, that part that <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> a floss off. Um, <laughs> I, that, stay stay tuned. Oh. I love it. Now, I, two two questions came in at the same time, which I love because they're kind of connected. So I'm going to give the lead up. First, Kitchen Party wasn't the only show this last year where your song "We're Not Alone Tonight" was in. The other one, of course, was uh -huh. uh, we used it in our holiday show this year, Peter Pan. Uh, if you're able to, um, you know, tell us what it was like seeing your song taken and used in a wholly different context by those people at Neptune Theatre. It was. I mean. It, it's so hard to explain, you know, like it's, you have a song, like to, to write a song and then to then have the song, to then be able to perform the song and then have the song in a show and then have someone else take it and put it in another, like there are so many steps to like how awesome it, life can be. And then you get to that point. And my wife and I went to see Cinderella and we sat in the audience and then they started singing it. And I it's I can't even really explain it. It was it was so awesome to hear this per, it, and a production too. Not even it'd be great if someone at an open mic did it, right? But all of a sudden yeah. you've got people who actually rehearsed it and they know what they're doing and it sounds great and they're dancing to it and it's it's incredible. It's an incredible feeling. And there was the yeah another song was in that show too and and the way that that one what am I doing here was sort of fit into. The, the way the pirates were dancing around. Oh, it was just really great. It was amazing. Cool. Let's do it again um, sometime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. That second song, I was like, I really want to use this song. I think I can use it in this moment. <laughs> and then I really squeezed and pushed it into existence for the because I, I love the song. Um, so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, We're Not Alone Tonight. Um, or Not Alone Tonight, right? Is that the official title? I was. I would say We're, we're not, not Alone Tonight. tonight. It's We're Not Alone Tonight. Um, we're not alone tonight. Yeah. Yeah. But well, we're not. We've got each other. Um, <laughs> that was the cheesiest host thing I've said <laughs> for the whole three weeks. Um, <laughs> what has this uh, pandemic done to what you're supposed to be doing right now? Um, has there been any cancellation and, and disruption in your life? I'm assuming everyone has experienced something, but uh, Celia, you just grimaced. I'm, I'm going to go to you first. Well, I just I, nothing has nothing has uh, been really interrupted for me um, at the moment. Obviously, it's just you're just we're all just kind of waiting to see what will happen next. When will things be normal? Will things go as planned? So that's kind of it. Um, the yeah. only thing that I'm thinking about. Cool. Um, and uh, Malia, anything for you? Anything get? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, <clears throat> so this spring, I was in rehearsals and workshops for a folk puppetry musical with Theater of the Beat here in Toronto mm -hmm. called Sailor's Song. And today I was supposed to leave for a tour of the West Coast for the next oh. month and a half, um, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, we, we're we staying connected as a cast and we're gonna try to do some sort of preview or something online or maybe just like a live performance of some of the songs. Uh, and then we're trying to reschedule the tour for later in the fall. So um you know it's it's just it's a restructuring and it's a it's a trying to adapt to the circumstances and just figuring out how to best use your time creatively and uh mm. take care of yourself yeah i've seen quite a few posts by you where you've been collaborating with artists and and posting stuff and they've been fantastic please don't stop yeah. doing it i i won't my grandparents keep emailing me and being like we love your music and i'm like oh, okay <laughs> that's okay, why i'm gonna keep doing it so. I'm, gonna start, I'm gonna start emailing you too and say don't stop <laughs> all right <laughs> good um and uh ian i mean your, your tour in australia did it get interrupted is that what happened yeah it did um which is a real shame there was a a, a couple gigs and a festival at the end of it that kind of got uh they got torn off um but that was 
it actually was down to the wire. It was looking like that festival was going to happen. And then uh, I was sitting on a train in Sydney about to go up to the Blue Mountains to play the festival. And I got a text from someone saying that there had been uh, an outbreak that that day oh. in the town, yeah. right where the festival grounds are. So they had ca they canceled the festival. And then that was basically it. And then I, I, uh, I thought, well, you know, maybe I'm just going to, you know, hang out here for a couple of days and then and then go to Hawaii, which is what I was supposed to do mm. and carry on. And then the world ended. So then I had to very quickly, very quickly get home uh, with a lot of other Canadians, too. Actually, the flight that I managed to get on was just absolutely slammed full of Canadians trying to get back from Australia. And uh, we all counted ourselves very lucky. But there was that. And, uh, and, you know, I, a bunch of gigs that kind of go from now until whenever. So yeah. things keep getting canceled as you go on as, as, you know, as people are very cautiously and, and doing the right thing by saying, okay, we have to postpone this or cancel it outright, but it's kind of just rolling, rolling along yeah. every day. There's another domino that goes over, but every day there's another good thing that happens too. I, I count myself to be one of the very lucky ones where my wife and I are both, you know, independent artists. So having swaths of time without work is, is kind of not unusual for us. That's just the nature of the business. So, uh, um, you know, our spirits are incredibly high, even though, you know, the paychecks instantly stopped, but we're, you know, we're finding new ways. Like there's, I've got a little studio here, so I'm doing voiceover work and audio books and stuff like that. So that's picked up. Well, we expect a new album any day now. Um, so a new record, yeah. A new record, yeah. So um, before we run out of time, I do want to get to this. Now, uh, there is, in fact, truth in the rumor, the kitchen party. It was, in the, it was on the road last year. You've played a number of venues around Nova Scotia. And uh, we are currently booked to take the show to the Grand Theatre in, in London, Ontario in the fall. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, the, the, they're going to be playing as part of the grand season for three whole weeks um, there. And I love this idea of going to the Playhouse in Fredericton. Darren, if you know anyone at the Playhouse, don't give me a call. I know people at the Playhouse. I can give them a call. But uh, yeah, so the idea of the Kitchen Party, not only uh, performing at Neptune, but you know, playing other venues during the course of the year is um, is awesome. Uh, Karen, you, you played... Um, a corporate event at the beginning of the year. You want to just quickly tell us who that was for and what happened down there? Was that good? Yeah, it was awesome. We fortunately, before all the COVID nineteen stuff erupted, we were had the chance to do a Loblaws uh, corporate event and it was a massive event at the Canard Center. That's what you want me to talk about, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was it was so it was so great to like get the group together and again and you know have a last hurrah last mel rubber shuffle and and it was it went so well and it was really fun to translate the show to a different medium to a different you know experience and then it yeah it went great so it's fun to move it around mm -hmm. to different places because it takes on its own little uniqueness you know when you put it in a different place yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's very cool that way that it's so transportable and so yeah absolutely yeah. we had a lot of hang time yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some chips backstage. backstage we, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we chatted more during that that one gig than we did probably in two summers worth of doing shows. Yeah. I'm super grateful for it though because yeah, now that things are kind of slowing down. Oh hi, so Gary, hi. Hi. <laughs> I hope you're well. Awesome. So, Dominique, what's it like for you? Uh, it must be a weird situation. Uh, in fact, I think you just met a couple of these folks tonight. <laughs> Have you even met Karen? I don't think so. No. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so you're joining. The, you'll be joining the show when it when it happens later on in the uh, in the summer. Uh, it's scheduled there at the moment, and uh, we, you know, we're we're very sad. I don't want to get all teary and, and sad about this, but, but Celia uh, got another offer and is moving on to another show. But you know, whatever. It's great. It's good for you. Uh, <laughs> coming in, is it kind of daunting coming in and and filling those little uh, slippers that she got <laughs> around the stage in the show? Um, a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, but I met actually I met Celia the day that I I don't know if I told you this, but 
I met Celia, I was at Neptune, and and then I think I was on the phone or something, and we didn't get to talk, and then you had messaged me telling me that you were leaving the show. No, and then I saw you approximately, I'm gonna say 30 minutes after. Oh no, did I see you first? I don't know who you saw first, but like I remember I saw you, you were on the phone, and I was like, I didn't really know you, but I was like, I think this is a girl that I saw in a show, I wanna say at like Young Company, a competitor yeah. or something like that. I saw this girl playing the fiddle and I was yeah. like, oh my God, she would be perfect for the show. So I was trying to find you on Facebook while being creepy standing in the lobby. So then I decided I would just leave and like you know, the later. life of an actor, let me tell you. <laughs> no. But yeah, it was so funny. Well, what was funny is that I think uh, one of you messaged me. I, well, I think Celia messaged me and said, "Hey, what about Dominique? She'd be great, and she she does all the stuff, and you should." And you know, and also we'd been we just literally started talking as well. So I took that as a as a sign of endorsement. <laughs> it's hard to get from Celia Keon, let me tell you. <laughs> well, I've um, yeah, been. I very quickly want to fly around the room. Uh, because we should wrap up um, and, and tell me uh, your fondest memory of Neptune Theatre, whether it's this show or another show, just very briefly, a few seconds each. What's your fondest memory and what has Neptune meant to you over the last uh, over the last few years? Celia, you go first. Okay, this is like, a, there's just, it's so much. I have so many incredible memories that I've made it Neptune you know, over the past couple of years. It's it's so hard to to name one specific one, but I think the thing that makes Neptune such an amazing place to work is everyone else that works there. Like everyone in the staff, behind the scenes, wardrobe, stage management, box office, Janice, like Thomas and the crew, like everyone is so great. And I, that is the, the memory that I'm left with the most is all the people there. Thank you, Malia. Oh gosh, um, there's just like a series of really amazing connective moments with all of you is is coming through my head with the whole cast. Um, there's one that I always cherish every single night and I'll call it my favorite memory even though it's a million of them. But uh, there's one line that me and Celia sing together at the end of uh, um, Ordinary Day by Great Big Sea, which is just like, it's all right, it's all right. And we always make eye contact on it and it's really cute and just really reassuring and leaves me with a great feeling for the rest of the show. Um, yeah, just moments like Beautiful. that, Karen? thousands of them. Yeah, um, Maybe just getting a, a shot to be on the stage at Neptune was a thrill. My first show there was only a couple years ago in the musical Once, and again, with the actor-musician type of show. So having that opportunity, it opened so many doors for me, doing other shows and meeting other artists and, and, and leading to ultimately to Kitchen Party. Now it's just... I, I feel so grateful, I'm so happy. It's just fantastic, yeah. Dominique, you've been uh, on the Neptune stage for decades. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a, do you have a memory from, I say that only because I know that uh, we worked together when you were a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz. And you and that were was, the wizard. That was 10 years ago. <laughs> yes, yeah. I was young. Um, I I was very fortunate to do lots of shows growing up uh, with Neptune, and uh, it's always felt like a second home for me. So anytime I come back, you know, I have this home, and then I always go to Neptune, and it's like my second home. Um, but I've always always had lovely memories of the Wizard of Oz and you, and I you I had you for my Secret Santa, and you gifted. <laughs> Lovely eleven-year-old. Um, what was it? I think it was um, Moulin Rouge. So that that was. <laughs> um, uh, and I still have it in my room. So, uh, but it's been great to have Neptune and get to, you know, go to Toronto and say that I'm from Dartmouth and Halifax, Nova Scotia, and people go, "Oh my God!" So Neptune. So yeah, I'm very proud. All right, last quick word from Ian. Uh, Sorry, you cut out there a little bit, but I think you were asking me my favorite moment. <laughs> um, I'm going to squeeze in two quickly. One is this show because uh, it's the first show I've ever done at Neptune. I don't really do the acting thing very much anymore. So having a show like this, to be able to do this on a stage, work with you, Jeremy, to create it, and then work with all you 
amazing people, humans, musicians. It just could not have gone better. It just couldn't have gone better. And, and I could not be happier with the whole process, the hang, the music, it's all fantastic. Um, and the one little thing I wanted to get in there was that I saw Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat with Alfie Zappacosta when I was a young lad. And, uh, um, and that was kind of my first experience with live theater. And I think that probably had something to do with me getting to do all this later on in life. So those are my two moments. Awesome. Well, look, thank you all for being here. Uh, we're going to end with a video that I want to throw to that lasts just a few seconds. Uh, I want to thank uh, Support for Culture, who've come on board to support this uh, live stream uh, for the next uh, number of episodes. So thank you to them for uh, their support and for making this possible. Thank you to everyone that's been watching over these last few weeks. can't believe we're already... Uh, in the third week of this. Um, we are working on our guests for next week. If you have any ideas, drop us a line on the Neptune Facebook page uh, or through Twitter or any of the social media platforms, open to suggestions for guests. Um, I've got some pretty cool uh, folks coming up uh, just like tonight. So I uh, just wanna say thank you to the five of you for being here. I can't wait to see you in person back in the rehearsal hall and then back on the stage. And I thought I'd just end today by playing a video which kind of sums up what I think we're all missing right now from the theater world and from the arts community. Uh, so I will sign off with this um, and we will see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow is a special uh, self-indulgent birthday edition. I'm getting very old tomorrow. Uh, and so I have some very old friends uh, joining me uh, and we're going to eat cake, drink wine, and swap theater stories about Neptune Theater over the years. So thanks for being here, and uh, see you soon. Thank you. What theater and what the entertainment and culture industry does is create the heartbeat of the community. Arts and culture informs your love of community, your love of entertainment, uh, your love of each other. Making art here, surrounded by the energy of the place. There is no other place to be.